I'd like you to remember the number 57. With that in mind, I'd like to talk about HIV and AIDS. There are now 37 million people living with HIV. And while only half of them have access to life-saving treatment, that proportion continues to rise every single year. Modern HIV medication means that you can live an almost full lifespan with the virus, a far cry from the virtual death sentence three decades ago. Yet the virus continues to spread, infecting nearly two million people last year. That's more than three new infections every minute. And of course, it's no longer the 1980s or 1990s, and yet shamefully, stigma and discrimination still surround HIV and AIDS. There are myths and inaccurate perceptions about who gets HIV or how the virus can be transmitted. And that can have a major impact on the lives of people living with HIV, from being excluded from social or family activities to being denied healthcare services. In fact, the World Health Organization says that fear of stigma and discrimination is the number one cause of people being afraid to be tested for HIV, of telling others about their status, and of starting to take treatment. And that means they can go untreated or start treatment too late, putting their own health at risk and increasing the chance that they might transmit the virus to someone else. So even though effective treatment already exists, the virus continues to spread and people still face stigma and discrimination. What can be done about this? Imagine if we could cure HIV. Imagine if we could transform this lifelong infection into a temporary ailment. An HIV cure would free individuals from a lifetime of infection and treatment, and it would free society from a major medical and financial burden. As people learn that HIV is something you can get rid of, stigma and discrimination would begin to disappear. And that means people would be more likely to seek testing and treatment. And there are now thousands of scientists and others around the world hard at work trying to develop a cure for HIV. I've been fascinated by viruses since I was a teenager and I read The Hot Zone which tells the story of an Ebola outbreak and the search for the origins of Ebola in the rainforests of Eastern Africa. When I started university, I wanted to get involved in biomedical research that might one day have an impact on people's lives, no matter how small. I also wanted to work on something that was a little bit less scary than Ebola. When I started my graduate studies in Montreal, I joined the lab of Dr. Mark Weinberger, an AIDS activist and pioneer of HIV research, who sadly passed away earlier this year. During my first project in his lab, we studied a new type of drug that was able to stop HIV from inserting its DNA into the cell's own DNA. We helped explain why this drug was even more effective than anticipated when it was first used in the clinic. I then switched gears to a proof of concept HIV cure project we took a small component of the virus, manipulated it in the lab, and used it as a weapon against the virus to stop it from becoming dormant. And this dormant virus is the key to curing HIV. When I finished my PhD four years ago, I moved to the Pasteur Institute in Paris where HIV was discovered in 1983. I've spent most of my time there trying to better understand the molecular details of what happens after HIV gets inside a cell. For HIV to successfully infect a cell, it must gain access to the nucleus, where the cell's chromosomes are found. We uncovered a region of the virus that can be targeted in the lab to stop it from getting into the nucleus. This both prevents the cell from becoming infected and stops the virus from being able to become dormant. I also helped set up an antibody-based HIV cure project that my colleagues at Pasteur are working on. You might be wondering, why don't we already have a cure for HIV? 
Why is the virus so hard to get rid of once you get it? HIV infects helper T cells, which are like the air traffic controllers of the immune system. Most of the time, when a cell gets infected, HIV will produce thousands of copies of itself before killing that cell. And if too many helper T cells have been killed, there's nothing left to control the immune system, causing AIDS. But a tiny fraction of helper T cells, around one in a million, have dormant virus. Rather than replicating, HIV will insert its DNA into the cell's own DNA, but it won't produce anything. This dormant virus doesn't harm the cell, and it's invisible to the immune system and to HIV medication. Well, so what? If the dormant virus is just a piece of DNA sitting there not doing, it, doing anything, what's the problem? The problem is helper T cells live as long as you do, and months, years, even decades later, the dormant virus can come out of hiding and start replicating, which means that if you aren't taking HIV medication, it will spread throughout your body. Think of a fire that's almost out, but a spark escapes and ignites a forest fire. This is why HIV is incurable today. Because of the dormant virus, once you have HIV, you have it for life. So to cure HIV, we need to get rid of all this dormant virus. But that's actually really difficult because the cells with the dormant virus are so rare and they look pretty much like other healthy cells. It's not even like looking for a needle in a haystack. It's almost like looking for one particular piece of hay in a haystack. Timothy Ray Brown, also known as the Berlin patient, is the first and so far only person ever to be cured of HIV. He had both HIV and cancer. And 10 years ago, he underwent an intensive cancer treatment that his doctors in Berlin modified in the hopes of curing his HIV at the same time. And while this was successful, and it proves that it is possible to cure HIV, the treatment that he underwent is extremely invasive and dangerous and can only be attempted in cases of life-threatening cancer. A more widespread cure would require a completely different approach. And I'd like to tell you about two of the most promising and fascinating approaches to curing HIV that are now being developed. The first of these uses antibodies to kill the cells with dormant virus. And this is work being done by scientists all around the world including my colleagues at Pasteur. An antibody is a protein produced by the immune system that has a particular three-dimensional shape and electrical charge. Think of a mountain range where the peaks and valleys are overlaid with positive and negative electrical charges. And a specific combination of peaks, valleys, and charges gives the antibody the ability to recognize a particular target and to lock onto it like a magnet. And that target could be cells that are infected with HIV. Everybody infected with HIV actually produces antibodies that recognize the virus, but these are almost always too weak. Fortunately, a few very rare HIV-infected individuals produce exceptionally powerful antibodies. And the genetic information from these people can be used to produce large amounts of these super antibodies in the lab. And once in the lab, these can even be engineered to become more powerful. So let's take a look at what actually happens when we try to cure HIV using these specially engineered super antibodies. If somebody has HIV and we treat them with these antibodies, well, actually nothing happens. Remember, the dormant virus doesn't produce anything. And the HIV medication this person is taking will stop other virus from replicating. So there's nothing for the antibodies to recognize. They have no targets to lock onto. What we first need to do is activate the dormant virus using special drugs that will force the DNA of the dormant virus to become active, causing the virus to begin replicating. And that will create targets for the antibodies. So now we can come in and treat this person with super antibodies 
and these will, these will recognize these cells and lock onto them like powerful magnets. And once locked onto their targets, these antibodies will recruit other specialized killing cells of the immune system that act like assassins. And these will seek out and destroy any cells that are covered with superantibodies. So if we are able to activate all the dormant virus, and if the superantibodies and the immune assassins are strong enough, we can remove all the dormant virus from the body and cure HIV. We already know this works in principle in laboratory experiments. And this is now in the very early stages of testing in clinical trials with HIV positive volunteers. So that's how we might one day hope to cure HIV with antibodies. But there's another very different approach to curing HIV also being developed. And it's based on a powerful new technology called CRISPR. The goal here is not to kill the cell with dormant virus, but rather to directly remove the dormant virus without harming the cell. CRISPR is a form of gene editing where special proteins act like molecular scissors to cut particular sequences of DNA. Gene editing is actually a pretty old technology as far as molecular biology goes. It's been around in the lab for a few decades. But to edit DNA in living cells has traditionally been very cumbersome and labor intensive. It's a little bit like learning to develop negatives in a homemade photography darkroom, where it's as much an art as a science, and you don't always get the result that you want. With CRISPR, it's like we now have Photoshop for chromosomes. CRISPR lets us make very specific uh, changes to a DNA sequence at precise locations. Inside each cell of your body are three billion DNA letters, and dormant HIV is only 9,000 of these letters, hidden somewhere among the three billion of the cell. So by using CRISPR to target precise DNA sequences that are only found in dormant HIV and nowhere else, we can inactivate or directly delete the dormant virus from the cell. This is relatively straightforward to do in the lab, but for this to work in people, we need an efficient way to get the CRISPR system into their bodies. Earlier this year, this was tested in mice that had dormant HIV. Scientists took a harmless virus that they modified and used it to infect the mice. And once inside, this virus actually produced copies of the CRISPR system inside each cell of the mice. And incredibly, almost all of the dormant virus was cut from their bodies giving hope that a similar approach might one day work in people. The two strategies that I've just talked about, using antibodies to kill the cells with dormant virus, and using CRISPR to remove the dormant virus without harming the cell, these are two of the most promising cure approaches being developed by thousands of scientists around the world. But it's not only basic scientists leading the way. There's a crucial role being played by clinicians and others involved in clinical trials by taking experimental treatments developed in the lab and testing them for the first time in clinical trials with HIV-positive volunteers. There's also a role for a variety of social scientists from running stigma reduction programs to addressing social and economic barriers that limit the access of some HIV populations from participating in clinical trials. And of course, the HIV community are an invaluable piece of this puzzle. We have to remember that for people living with HIV who take part in early clinical trials of experimental cure treatments, there's likely to be very little personal benefit and certainly some level of risk. And yet many people with HIV continue to volunteer for these trials because of the massive social benefit that could result. Who remembers the number that I asked you to keep in mind? 57. This is how many people have become infected with HIV since the start of this presentation. And that's happening all day, every day. It's 57 too many. You don't have to be a scientist to help in the fight against HIV and the drive for a cure. You can also help make a difference. Yes, this could be through financial support, like making a donation to a group that supports cure research. 
but you can also help make a difference without spending anything. Learn about stigma and discrimination and speak with someone you know who might be living with HIV. Or do your part in helping to end HIV transmission and go get tested. Take a colleague, a neighbor, a friend, heck, even your grandma. It's quick, it's easy, and it's free. For the 37 million people living with HIV today, and the two million more who are becoming infected every single year, the development of an HIV cure would be nothing less than the realization of a dream. A dream of a lifetime free of infection and treatment, free of the fear that they might one day develop AIDS, free of the stigma and discrimination of being HIV positive. Let's be realistic. There are substantial challenges to be overcome, but progress is accelerating and we are on the path to making an HIV cure a reality.